Hello, fourth grade leopards. Welcome to one of two readings of books that are companions to our study of our state bird of Indiana, the Cardinal. This reading comes to you from How Artists See Animals by Colleen Carroll. And this is going to go through four paintings by famous artists and share how they see birds when they create. The American Flamingo by John James Audubon. This flamingo is really in the pink. The artist who made the picture spent most of his life watching all kinds of birds and drawing them in their natural environments. Can you tell where home is for these birds? The big flamingo in the foreground bends his spindly legs and lowers its head to the water. If you want to trace your finger on the screen or close to the screen, you can trace your finger along its curving neck. What do you think the bird is doing in this funny position? And before I take the picture down, notice the light sketches at the top above the bird. You may have noticed those small sketches at the top Sometimes artists make studies as a way of practicing before they make a final picture. What parts of the bird's body do you see in these paintings and drawings? Can you find them on the big bird? So it's sort of like a map key or a legend. If you look at the small sketches, you can probably see how the artist then used that small sketch in the large bird image and then proceeded to paint it. The next artist that saw birds differently is Vincent van Gogh in the wheat field with crows. Where are the birds in this picture? If you noticed the black lines that look like flapping wings, you found them. With just a few simple lines, the artist created a whole flock of crows. Have you ever drawn birds this way before? I bet you have. This is probably the first way you ever drew birds and probably the easiest way. Some of my students even call these letter M birds because they look like a very stretched out capital letter M. Some of the larger birds seem very close. And of course, this is something we discussed talking about distance when we discuss the art elements. Making things look close makes them seem and appear big. Some of them seem far away because their shapes almost blend into the sky. Perhaps they've flown a great distance to reach the wheat field, or maybe they're flying away to a different place. Do you think the crows are coming or going? What sounds might you hear if you were standing in this field? And here's a shot of the entire painting instead of a piece of it. When I showed you that piece of the painting a moment ago, that's called a detail. The next artist is Constantine Brancusi, and this is not a painting, this is a sculpture. This is entitled Bird in Space. Although you might not believe it, this grace, graceful sculpture is of a bird. It may not look like a real bird, but that wasn't what the artist was trying to do. So I'm going to show it to you and then I'll continue reading. Trace your finger from the bottom of the sculpture and beyond the pointed tip. And I'll put it back up so that you can do that. How does the curved shape help you imagine a bird soaring through the air? So I'll place it back in the picture frame and you can trace on your screen or right next to it. And see if that gives you a feeling of a bird taking off through the air. Have you ever wondered to yourself how it would feel to fly like a bird? Even though the sculpture looks very simple, the artist had to think carefully about what birds look like to capture the feeling of flight. What parts of a bird's body do you think he was imagining as he created this work of art? Was it the wing or the tail? Maybe it was the beak. Perhaps it was a combination of many things. 
If you were making a sculpture of a bird, what parts would you choose? And now the last artist that sees birds differently is Georgia O'Keeffe's Blackbird Over Snow Covered Red Hills. The Red Hills are actually dirt and rock hills behind Georgia's house. And if you were with me in third grade when we started the school year, you started with a study of Georgia O'Keeffe and you might remember that the hills behind her house are all red dirt and rock looking very much like brick red or flower pot red. However, where she did live in New Mexico, it did snow and cover those hills, even though it would be very hot in the summer months. So blackbird over snow covered red hills sounds a little strange at first, but that's why the red hills are technically white in this painting. And those of you that remember Georgia O'Keeffe's work probably recognize the simple lines and bright blue. Have you ever pretended to fly like a bird? There's another artist who's shown the beauty of a bird in flight, but she's done it in a more realistic way. If you could hitch a ride on the back of this sleek, painted black bird, what would you see on the ground below? And here is a detail of just the bird. This artist too used gently curving lines to make this graceful bird and help you imagine what it must feel like to fly. The bird soars through a wide open sky with extended wings. Move your finger over the lines of its body. Now trace these same lines through the air with your arms as if you were a bird gliding over these snowy hills. And if you would like to trace close to the screen with your finger, I will hold the image up for you again. That is all that we will be reading from How Artists See Animals. Make sure you rate the book when you are finished viewing the video and submit that rating according to the directions.